operated the plant from 1979 until he retired a decade later. There was a lot of work, took a lot of maintenance to keep those, those old generators running. Where would we be without electric energy today? After the Sullivan plant went online, change came quickly to the region it served. In 1905, Portland hosted the Lewis and Clark Exposition, the unofficial World's Fair. Electricity was a premier attraction. The Lewis and Clark Exposition was on the West Coast, certainly, the first time electricity had really been used in such an outspoken kind of a way. Everything was lit up. Thomas Edison strolled the concourse with Vice President Charles Fairbanks and with Henry Good, President of Portland General Electric. Oregon got discovered once more. People came, the world came. Millions of people saw what Oregon had to offer. Within five years of the Expo, Portland's population jumped more than 50%. And everybody floods in, the city grows, the demand for power grows, and it really sets Oregon on a course to become what it would in the 20th century. Despite epic changes wrought by human ingenuity, Willamette Falls remains subject to the whims of its river. And during the major floods that have occurred in the past, the falls disappear. In 1964, the Willamette topped its banks in a flood that generations will remember. Again in 96, the river surged and the falls mostly vanished beneath coursing plumes. Historically, only during flood events could large numbers of fish find a way over. Today, adult salmon use a passageway managed by the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. And with PGE's help, young ones pilot downstream and out to the ocean. I think in many ways you could say that the Sullivan Hydro Project has been a pioneer in a laboratory for fish passage. The utility has developed a system that moves fish around the falls and past the dangers of spinning turbines. The North Fish Bypass is a funnel which basically pulls fish that are in our forebay around the hydro project and to the tail race. It's a big water slide. This has some of the highest survival of any powerhouse in the region. Welcome news for those who take an interest in fish. The salmon are calling me right now. I need to be there. Ray remembers the first time he caught a salmon, just around the corner. Well, 1966, I was 12 years old. Yeah. I caught it on an apple knocker. It's a lure you don't see anymore. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Every one of these things makes me shake. just there's something about it whoa they fight that's a dandy Willamette Falls is where I grew up fished it all my life I love the sound of it I love the scenery um, I'm getting emotional <laughs> It's impossible to know how many lives have intersected with these basalt walls and the structures around them. They all sort of combine into one agglomeration where all kinds of things were powered by the fact that water is falling on a steady stream 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. And we could capture that power and use it to do things, to make things, to build things. This is a place where thousands of years of history ticked to the clock of moving water. The sounds, the sounds, the roar, it's a melody. I, I, I love it. It reminds me of the voice of my grandfather. As the river flows, 
so our own presence continues into the future at Willamette Falls. I certainly hear a future. I really do.